Good morning, church. Um, just uh, wanted to keep you up to date with what was going on here in the uh, in the house. I uh, just woke up not too long ago. It's probably like nine nine fifty right now. Um, woke up half hour ago. Um, been waking up off and on all morning long and. Uh, the, uh, the cut that you saw there um, on my left leg, I wanted you guys to see it. That uh, it went from here. Right? You saw it yesterday. Today is the uh, 21st, from here to here. And uh, this is just their way of letting me know that they've been in the apartment. I remember this one. And uh, so I'm not exactly sure what it is that they want, but. Now it's this one. I'm going to show it to you. This. This. Uh, maybe you're falling over. Please. Yeah, do uh, See it on the side there. It's over here somewhere. I think that's it right there. Yeah, that's it right there. I don't know if you can see it or not. Don't want to break the door of the, uh, of the kitchen cabinet. I'm trying to show you my little cutsy there, but that's just evidence that somebody was in the apartment. And uh, I'm not exactly sure why they keep coming in here and uh, and doing it. Um, and with it comes. Uh, the sexual immorality and the rape. Um, I don't, I don't see where this is going to end, and uh, what it does it looks like it's going to be in death, um, either mine or or theirs, wherever the clan is. That's, that's what it looks like. right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. And then that's the. Uh, you see, that's the window. How do they get in through the window? I don't know. I don't know how to get through the window. And uh, I don't know how they get through the door. You see that right there? I put that right there. So that if they unlatch the door, look, if I unlatch the door, how are you going to open it? Right? You can't open it. In case of an emergency, a fire, all I got to do is remove the board. Now the question is, how are they passing the board? What are they using to remove the board? To, to, to do all this cutting, right? How do you, how do you put an end to this? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to put an end to it. And then they've got their voices on an intercom in the building. I don't know where it, the voice is coming from. I think I might have heard it over here in the living room. Area. Everything is an area in my apartment because of uh, the fact that it's a. Uh, so it's somewhere in this vicinity. See this right here? Right here. So it's coming from the back. I could hear it. You could hear it. You could hear the voice. It's sort of like a, a hidden uh, microphone uh, speaker. It's a hidden speaker. And it's connected to one of the rooms somewhere in the building. Um, I don't know where or which one. I don't know if, uh, if any of you are in... Um, this kind of situation, um, don't lose heart, okay? I know it sounds crazy, but don't lose heart. This is my household prayer here, right? This is my household whole prayer. It's coming from Matthew 6, um, 9 through 14. Right? This is the Clarence 215 household prayer, and I have a copy of this in every room, one in the bathroom, one in the kitchen, one in the living room. Actually, I lied. I don't have one in the living room, but I have one in the uh, um, one in the in the office area where I usually have my books, and one in the bedroom area where the bed is. And the household prayer says, uh, "Lord, bless me with a home where I can rest." Obviously, that's the only place to rest is at home, right? Unless you're homeless. Um, cook a good meal using these utensils. Right? Cook a good meal to. Um, to eat a home where I can pray 
study your word and do the ministry that you have given me in Portland. A home where you can study the word, right? And do the ministry in Portland. Again, what it says here. Father, bless me with a um, a roomy apartment that is not uh, too small, but large enough for me to walk through without bumping into furniture or um, having to use a veil or a curtain. You know, sort of like no, no more curtains right, to separate things and everything is so claustrophobic. Right? You can barely get through it. If I wasn't a small man, I probably wouldn't be able to live here. But bless me with, with my own home, house, property, a place where I can bring a young girl, begin my own family, and raise my own children. Begin my own family and raise my own children. How am I going to do that, Americans, if an old Haitian woman is constantly being brought in here by MacArthur, John Fullerton MacArthur, and um, and the gay community and the clan. Yesterday I went to uh, the library uh, to upload the video that you saw on YouTube. And when I try to switch over to iPage um, to upload that video and all the videos of December. I couldn't do it. They wouldn't allow it. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to put, how to remove them out of the background so they're not doing these things. And they sent me a guy that looked like a Thomas Sullivan to walk by the police department table with the permission of John MacArthur because Sullivan is an exact replica of MacArthur when he was young. So they sent me this guy. Um, he was probably bigger than I was in stature if I had stood up. Um, fairly decent looking. Um, a body that's... He wasn't fat. He wasn't skinny either. But uh, what they communicated with his body was enough for me to understand what they were after, the kind of response that they were looking for. And I thought, how interesting, right? We are 25... 25 years away from uh, a situation that had occurred with this man. And here we are 27 years later, still dealing with the same pastor in Nanuet when I was in Nanuet High School, still dealing with this man and this Haitian woman. When I was living at the Nanuet group home, um, I had my own room. And in having my own room, it was because MacArthur was in the background with this Haitian woman who was a guardian um, but she had lost the guardianship in 85 in 83 and then in 85 because Cardinal McCluskey's group home had stepped out and uh, she basically had her she had her lover Tony Gaston beaten on me but at the time I didn't know that Tony Gaston was a McCarthy representative and um, I didn't know anything about the McCarthy's at the time so anyway um, they had conspired together, John and Gabriel, the two, and they had brought in Dean, who was supposedly representing Gabriel, and Tom, who was representing John himself, um, working at RKL. So these men, at the time I didn't know that's who they were, they were working there in the same place where I was at. This was my first, one of my first jobs. I was about 17 or so, 16, 17. And um, MacArthur had set it up they were controlling me up here, and I didn't know that it was them controlling. Well, anyway, long story short, um, an incident had occurred with Sullivan, um, and, and it was my first incident outside of um, my one and only incident outside of um, the Nanuet group home where it involved a homosexual or a gay guy or a clan guy, and um, a gay clan guy. It was a setup. I was under the, the same way Melinda tells me you need to go to Taboo and you need to go to um, Fantasy and you need to go to those places. This, that's, it was around that time that it began. Um, and probably before that, when I was 11, they started talking to me. And I didn't know that's what it was. So anyway, it was around that time that they started telling me what to do. You know, write a letter to a boy and tell him that you want to carry his baby. Um, you know, go to the police department and report this and go to Webster's house and um, pick up his mail and knock on his door, something. You know what I mean? 
And I wasn't sure of the things that I was doing, you know. But anyway, that's what had gotten me hit, uh, hit by, um, I guess, by their community. And I had to leave and, and, and went to Southern California. A lot of things had happened. Um, I had put, um, I had put my hands on, on Sullivan and um, Sullivan had threatened to kill me. And, um, and so I, I left three or four months after that. Sullivan and I had stopped talking. And uh, we never became friends again. I was under the control, I guess, of, 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 of a spirit that I didn't know could talk to me. So anyway, um, I didn't know that that was going to come back uh, 10 years later and by force and by be beatings and by cuts, what you saw in my leg. So, you know, when I had more control and I was more mature, I said no. When I was in my late 20s, I said no, I don't want any of this. Uh, when I was convinced of the gospel that was being preached to me, I was like, no, I, I don't want this. I don't want sex with guys. I don't want to be a bag. Um, and I said, no, this isn't what I wanted. I wanted to be a, a, a minister of the gospel because now I understand the gospel and how it frees people from sin and the temptation of it. Um, you know, and, and, and as I'm talking to you, I'm dealing with the issue on my computer. I wish I could show you. You know, I, I have a new, I have a new Sullivan now that's running, that's coming in and out, but I'm still dealing with John MacArthur and Gabriel Franklin. So anyway, back to the university PSU up here. I go to, um, I go there to upload the video because I was uh, thrown out of the um, the library. Um, the library uh, had written me a letter. Um, December 24th, I had preached a message on the kingship of Christ and how Christ was being um, treated the same today as he was back then. And um, I explained the whole thing. And asked the people, where are you at with this kingship? You know, is he your king? Uh, do you believe in the fact that... He was the king of the Jews. The response of the Jews and the response of the library and the response of the American people was to um, force me to come out to keep me from uploading that video and the photos on iPage and then bar me for six months from January, from December to June um, when I told the guy to keep your cock away from my ministry. So. Anyway, long story short, so that's what brought me to the Portland State University Library yesterday. So when I'm at that library, and for all the years that I've been in that library, they would gas me to sleep in the basement where there's a biblical section of all the, the books. They were gassing me to sleep in that area, and then they would bring Gabriel to give me oral sex while I worked over there when I was a homeless. And it was only when I was a homeless that I would use the library that way. Um, and when I was writing some of my books. So I'm sitting there on the uh, fourth floor and uh, trying to upload this video and here comes this guy and I'm going, oh my God. And I knew as soon as I saw his face, I'm like, I'm supposed to know you and I'm supposed to want you. It's not just the knowing, it's the wanting. You know, I'm supposed to have a homosexual heart. And so I'm looking at this guy's face and then I, and I, and then I sort of like, like a camera zoom down to his bottom, right? And I'm going, I'm supposed to know this because I've been trained for it, I've been given the information. And so the first time I'm kind of like, that looks a little bit like something. So he goes and he sits and, and then this old man comes out of nowhere and he sits in between him and I, because I'm like the last, um, I was closest to the bathroom and he was, let's see, one, two, three, three or four tables away from me. So he leaves. Um, so after about half an hour, he gets up and he walks by, and I'm like examining this guy's face, and I'm thinking, yeah, that's definitely a Solomon. And as he's walking, I'm zoomed in on this guy, and I'm going, hmm, I should know this because I've been trained. And the more I looked, the more I was like, okay, I understand who it is now. I understand this is going back to Washington State. I know who it is that you're you're trying to communicate. I won't say his name, but I know who it is that you're just by the way the person his while well, he's walking, I could tell exactly who it was. So I leave and um, and go to lunch. MacArthur comes out through the community. Melinda comes out through the community. And um, I go back into the library, this time fifth floor, to do the work. And they, the fourth floor, they had somebody in the bathroom. They had a, a cleaner in the bathroom. And I figured, okay, well, they knew I need to use the, 
you, you need to, to rest, use the restroom. So they put the cleaner there. And I decided, okay, well, I'll just go up to the fifth. And when I went up to the fifth, sure, sure enough, they had a table set up for me exactly where, um, it, it's almost like they had the table on one side, right? Um, and then there was rows of books open all the way to the back. So if somebody was sitting in the back, they could see me looking at gay pornography, right? And they kept on saying, you need to come out, you need to come out, you need to come out. And I'm thinking, no, I don't. This isn't my problem. This isn't my issue. This isn't me. I have a homosexual pastor who's in the back, who's constantly after me 24-7, 7 days a week, 365 days of the year, wanting me to take the position of homosexual man. And I'm thinking, how am I going to put an end to this? How am I going to stop this man from chasing after me? Because he, in his mind, is convinced that that's the position of the New Testament church. This is what the church has become today, homosexuals. So the LGBT, PT, BT, whatever they're called, their community out there is telling people that that's what the church has become. That's not the church. That's the Antichrist. That's the position of the Antichrist. That's not the position of our Lord. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, my body may be enticed by another person, but am I going to the library to look for a dude to do that? No, I'm not. Right? But yet these people, for all the hours that I was there, was controlling the, um, was controlling the, 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 the iPage account that I had so that I wouldn't upload the videos or the photos. All the way back, I mean, six weeks of work, right? So, can't, you know, the photos that you should be looking at, I can't. Like, I just took some pictures, right? The pictures of, of the, uh, almost, the shin, not the shin, but um, the area down here. Area down here where where the leg is down here the area down here okay um, even though it is a minor cut and it's not a broken arm right this is how it begins right this is how it begins with these people it starts out this big and then over the course of times it then it becomes a, a cut here or a hit there or pain here and then it becomes a brace here, right? And so it's, it's, it, it goes from this to this to this to, to the point where you're completely sprawled out on a hospital bed and you have to stay there for three days. So I tell you this when it's on this level so that when I'm gone, you understand that this was the work of a homosexual clansman. And he progressively built it up, right? He progressively, he's been... He's been, he, he's been staying here for, I don't know how many weeks, months, and years. He won't leave the background. Um, and he's playing the role of the savior, the guy that comes along and wakes me up because I'm clinically dead. But I don't believe this America. I don't believe a, a, a seminary professor or pastor would come and do this to a student for this long without ever coming out of the back and saying, hey, I'm the one waking you up. There's something not right with what this MacArthur has become in my own life. This is disturbing. It's disturbing to wake up in the morning and to find, you know, cuts like this, right? And cuts like this. And cuts here and on the leg, right? It's disturbing. Um, and of course, I, I usually get pissed off and you know, and I'm starting, and I'm cursing him out because he's in the background and you can hear him on an intercom. And when I tell the police department, MacArthur's here on the intercom and he cut me, the police department says, well, where's the proof? You know, where's the proof that he came and walked through the door? I'm going, well, these cuts here, they're minor cuts, but they're sting. You know, they sting. And it's almost like, if this is a clean thing that John is doing, why is John hiding? Why isn't John standing right here with me? Right? Why isn't Gabriel standing right here with me and explaining to me this is a medical thing? I don't think it's a medical thing. I think these people are infatuated for one reason and one reason only is to cut me down. Right? She wants to cut me down as a sex partner or, or companion, and he wants to cut me down as a slave or a homosexual. And the two of them have been working together. You know this, I've been telling you this. So, you know, the prayer there is, you know, a place where I can bring a young bride. How am I going to bring a young bride when I have a 94-year-old 90, woman who's constantly, you know, doing this? Tell me, church. 94 years old. She's been doing this since I was, what, two? 94. 94 years old this woman has been doing this. 
And him, I don't know when he came into the picture. I, I was told he came into the picture in, his, in, in, in the 1970s, right? A place where I can bring a young bride, begin my own family. I was removed from my family in the 1970s. In the 1970s. Twice, or if not three times, right? And it's like every time I went back to my mother, you know, they would, she would come and fetch me. But she's saying the reason why she fetched me away from my family, it was because of MacArthur. MacArthur who was dealing with Jones, right? Because my mother's face is that of Jones. I, I don't know how to put an end to this. It, you know, how, how do you pray this and then live this, right? You're praying for God to deliver you. But then this is what this man is doing. And he's, he's supposed to be on the Christian level as a leader in the church. Church leaders don't do this. Something is not right. You as an American government and an American people don't seem to care about either my prayer, my preaching, and the things that I say to you. But it is affecting the church of God in ways that you can't even begin to fathom. If a man and a woman on Barack Obama's level was going into Barack's home where he sleeps at night and do that against him, as this woman has. You don't think that would have an effect on his relationship with Congress, with his daughters, or with Michelle? That would have a huge effect, because it's adultery. Whether it's a male that would be doing it, or a female, it would be disturbing. At, at just at the fact that somebody is, what, trespassing and coming in. And, you know, it's like, well, where's the video that is happening? And, 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 and the president would be like, well, I'm not exactly sure, you know, how to explain this, but every time, you know, I have these welts here and welts here, and and, and I'm, of course, we're, we would never ask the president of this, of this country to to reveal some of this stuff, right? But is who's to say that he's not dealing with his own demons, right? So the prayer of the heart may be, Lord, bless with a home, with a home that's spacious enough to live in, so you're not congesting. Um, in a, a place where I could bring a bride, right? Because I'm still not married, but yet this woman has been given permission by a, an American clansman to do that, right? And uh, to raise a family. But if I can't stop what's happening now, how am I gonna raise a family? I can't, there's no way for me to start one, raise one, and to maintain one. Because the American clan takes control of our African family. How do they do that? By using African women like Gabriel Franklin to bring about adultery, fornication, um, incest, rape. So what exactly is going on in the American family or in the African American family that is affecting me here in this place, right? Something is going on in the African American family that's transferring over into this Haitian Cuban's house, right? So whatever is going on in your families where the European man has control as a Klansman and as a fag, um, you need to let internationals know this. I guess that's the point of the video. You need to let us know what the family really consists of. Or else, what's the point of Christians, international Christians coming and praying for a, a, bride, a young bride and instead he's getting an old woman, right? I used to, years ago, I used to have an infatuation for Melinda, John's youngest daughter. So I called her up once at um, Grace to You, and I said to her, you know, are you are you dating Todd Stanton? And, and she said, yeah, I am, you know. And I hung up the phone with her. Um, I think I might have sent her some flowers and a card, but it never dawned on me that this is what it was going to become. Her having to defend herself for 20 something years against me calling her at Grace to You and me sending her flowers. So instead of a young woman, what am I getting? I'm getting Guy Franklin's mother, who's in her 90s now. I'm 44. Men who knew me in my 20s are married with children. Men who are 44 years old have gray hair like I do and have, you know, sons and daughters graduating from high school and some entering college whose children I probably would be um, old enough to marry instead of having my own. So this is an ongoing thing with this Haitian family and John MacArthur. So if you're, you know, if, you, if you're looking at these videos and you're going, oh my, oh my God, and you knew me from the, 20, from the 80s, 
and you knew me from Manuel Group Home, or you knew me from uh, Grace Community Church, the college life department, you know, uh, back when Artavanis was the pastor. Um, this is what my relationship with MacArthur and his daughter has become, right? Because this is an ongoing thing with John. Um, where is Patricia MacArthur? You know, where's his wife? Where is the woman that should be um, standing against what her husband is doing? 94-year-old women don't come into people's homes to cut them by themselves. Somebody is opening that door. Somebody is climbing through that window. People don't walk through walls unless they're Jesus Christ. So who's doing it? Right? Who's doing it? And why is her voice on the intercom? Who is coming in and, 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 and leaving these little scratches? Right? These, can you see the scratch there? Right? Whether it's the hands or chopping off the back of the head. Right? Right here. When I woke up this morning, I just got out of the shower. When I woke up this morning, the hair was chopped up. The reason why it doesn't seem that way right now is because it's wet. But you ask yourself, you know, you're at the top of your lungs and, and you're pissed off. Not because, you know, you're a heathen, but at the fact that the, you know, the trespassing. You see, it says here, look at what it says here. This I have a no trespass, right? This is a guest addendum. What is a guest addendum? It says your guest must formally enter the building by either calling a resident from the door entry system or having a resident meet them in the lobby. Door entry system. A resident meet them in the lobby. Guests should not yell from the exterior of the building to get a resident's attention. If a guest is not able to contact a resident, they will not be permitted access into the building. Once a guest has entered the building, they must sign in at the front desk by presenting a valid state issued ID to the desk monitor. Guests only have to sign in once every 24 hours, which will what? Be tracked from midnight to, to midnight. Guests are not permitted to bring pillows, sleeping bags, blankets, or bed rolls into the building. And um, guests that are visibly intoxicated or under the influence of drugs will be asked to leave the building. Uh, they must be accompanied by a resident while in common areas. This includes the lobby, hallway, courtyard, community room, laundry room, garage, and balconies. Guests are not permitted to carry a resident's fob uh, for use when entering uh, the building. Guests may not use electrical outlets in common areas including lobby, hallways, community rooms, and laundry room. Residents are responsible for the actions of their guests. Violation of any condition of this addendum is what is considered a violation of the lease. Right, a violation of the lease. It says, now here's my question. If you're not my guest and you're not signed in, what are you doing in here? Right? May 2000, May 6, 2015. What are they doing in here? They're not my guests, right? And I'm not the one opening the door for them. Then what are they doing in here? If there's no signature, Right. If, the, if, if, if you go downstairs, I've been here since April of last year, there's no signature of me letting anybody in. There is no, um, there's no valid entry state ID that has been produced by anyone. So how are these cuts and bruises getting on my hands? What is President MacArthur and this Haitian woman doing? And they did this also at the last apartment conference. This is a mystery that I'm hoping that the church would help me to resolve if there really truly is a church in this country. The places that I've gone to ask for assistance, um, the people who are supposed to be the church have basically shrugged me off. I went to, I've been to, well, some of the local churches, local Protestant churches, um, even Catholic churches. And it's like, they turn instead of telling me the truth about who this MacArthur is and what he's doing, right? And so if you, if you're the government watching this, you should really consider how your laws are not protecting us who are international. If you're the church watching this, you should wonder why John still has a grudge after 20-something years. If you're the uh, immigration office watching this, you should be asking yourself, why is it that this Haitian woman is being permitted, right? Who is it that's giving these people permission to do this from uh, state to state, city to city, county to county, and apartment complex to apartment complex? I just read you the position of Cascade Management and Gretchen Kaford Commons. So then who's bypassing that at night? 
Who's bypassing that every time I fall asleep? Who has a key that does not work on the staff, right? And um, and allowing these people to come in and leave these cuts and bruises, right? Who is doing this? I mean, who outside, who in housing authority is overlooking the fact that this man is, 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 is trespassing with this Haitian woman? If she was by herself and, and not with an American, she'd be just like me. If she was not being accompanied by a European American who had authority to bypass um, to, to, to bypass management, um, to bypass cascade management, to bypass the, the manager downstairs, and to get, uh, you know, to for the police department to overlook all of this. So obviously there is something here that the American government, that MacArthur is waiting for from the U, the U.S. government. If he's doing this to me, because remember in 1974, when he took the same position, the guy committed suicide, right? The guy took his own life. So if this is the same system that um, he's using, right, then obviously he's talking to you as a government and he's saying, he's saying you need to take action. I don't know what that action is. I sort of feel like I'm, I'm, a, 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 I'm the monkey in the middle. Monkey in the middle of John and Gabriel who are dealing with their issues and the government who's supposed to be responding to this, the police department, who is waiting for evidence. And I don't know what evidence I'm going to produce that, to show that somebody is trespassing. What evidence am I going to produce to show that? Because as soon as I would put a camera in here, he would sabotage the camera. They took the camera that I had, um, the telephone that, camera that I had purchased from Sprint. So if, you know, and sometimes they'll come in here and sabotage this computer, right? And uh, if I don't, if I don't um, keep up with what they're doing, then I'll lose this computer like I've lost everything else. So I'm thinking I'm the monkey in the middle between a, a, a government and this man. And I'm not exactly sure what kind of response they're waiting to step in. But if they're, if the government that we have really truly care about is internationals and it's international relationships and people in this country, then what are they waiting for to step in? Right? Yesterday I read you the housing authorities, um, you know, the, 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 that little pamphlet. I won't do that today. Today I'm, I'm saying, why is the government doing this? There has to be a reason. What are they waiting for? Is, is it they're waiting for me or are they waiting for John? I'm not exactly sure which one of the, the two of us they're waiting for. Why are they on an intercom? And why are they allowing this? Well, I mean, if they really wanted to be dead, they could have had me dead years ago. Right? So if, 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 if I'm not dead yet and I'm still walking, um, then there's something that they're looking for, which I can't give it to them. Can any of you give it to them, perhaps? Maybe one of you who knows the situation on Grace Community Church property, maybe one of you at the Master's Seminary or the Master's College or um, Bob Jones University, perhaps. Somebody out there who knows what John is looking for, because I obviously don't have it, right? If I'm making another video this morning, I obviously don't have the answer that John is looking for. Um, and this right here distracts me from being able to to do my work, right? Um, as a preacher, you know, it, it takes time to upload these videos because they make it, you know, take time. They make it take time. You know, they waste it. They tell you, you need to come out as a fag first. You need to turn on the porno site first, you know, openly um, at the public library or openly at the Portland State University so that all the students see you um, in that light when in reality that's not the position of God with me, nor is it the position of the church with me. That's the position of John MacArthur. And I don't know whether or not Master Seminary is behind this. That's their president's position. And um, if it's not their president's position, then it's the gay community's position where they're forcing me to go online to, to um, open their sexual sites. And for what purpose or reason? I don't know. I don't know. There, there's something that's irking them, but they keep coming to me for it. And every time they come to me for it, I, I, I'm sort of at a loss. I don't, I don't, you know, I wake up with gashes on my legs and gashes on my arms and cuts here and chop there and sabotage this. And I, 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 I don't, I don't really know how to help these people. I don't have the answer. And I guess I'm saying, do you have an answer for these people? Do you have an answer for MacArthur? Do you, if you know him and you've been under this sort of pressure, and I'm sure that there have been others who, um, you know, who, 
who he's put in this kind of situation. If you know him and you know that he needs uh, assistance, perhaps, he needs uh, somebody to help him resolve this issue, or maybe you know Gabriel. Um, I don't know if it's specifically Gabriel that's chasing or John, or maybe the community's behind him, maybe the clan is behind John and saying, you know, and pushing him and saying, hey, you need to go after that guy because he didn't submit to us down in Grace Mary Church Bonfi. Or it may be the gay community pushing Gabriel and saying, hey, you need to go after that guy because he didn't submit to us either and he went after our women. So I'm not exactly sure who, if they're coming on their own initiative and being helped by the government, right, or being helped by the community, you know, government, community, church, clan, um, gay community, I don't, I don't really know. But what I do know is that somebody out there who knows the situation needs to get involved with what they're doing in here so that this could come to an end, this stop, right? The, the, the trespassing, the abuse, where I can't even get a girl to respond, right? How am I going to bring a woman into an apartment where I have trespassers? What are they going to do to her? Right? How how do I have how do I feel the confidence to to approach a girl and to date her when they have control over every woman that I come into contact with at the university at the at the at the churches in any church I go into because they're in the back they stalk and they follow from place to place how am I ever going to be able to start a family start a church ministry when everywhere I, I'm at I'm cursing up a storm I am at the top of my lungs. Because I'm so angry at what this pastor or this former pastor that I used to know is doing. How do I, I, I start a fellowship when the very person who taught me what fellowship was is sort of like Amadeus. Remember how his teacher had him killed and killed him and took his work from him. That's sort of how I feel this morning. You know, like Amadeus who has been trained and taught, but, you know, slightly. I'd say about 10% of what I know is from John, right? Um, and the rest is from the Holy Spirit. But yet, that 10% that he claims um, is is basically crippling me. It has crippled my relationship. Or maybe this is his way of showing me this is who we really are as an American people today. This is who we are as a race and the government. We don't abide by our laws. We'll give you an addendum, but we'll give you the, but what you're living is the complete opposite, right? We'll give you an addendum, sort of like a structure of how you 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 know how to maintain your 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 guests coming in and out, but us when we come in, we'll come through the window without your permission. We'll come through the door without your permission. We'll violate you sexually without your permission. We'll come in, we'll eat your food without permission. We will do things to you, and and what, if you can take it, you can stay. But if you can't take it, you need to go. Right. And so here's the addendum, which is the structure of what this relationship is supposed to be. But this is all that we're going to do against you so that you know. And who sits up all night long to do this sort of thing from apartment complex to apartment complex, from state to state, from city to city, from county to county? Who does that? Is it the federal government? Is it Barack and his administration? Is it Clinton and Bush in their administration? Because this was going on when they were presidents too, right? This was going on when they were presidents. So I, I, I'm not exactly sure. I'm appealing to the American people here, and I'm saying, okay, I, I don't get this. This is a constant every single day, every day. What is this? Where is the master seminary? Right? And if it's not John and his staff or Gabriel and hers. And who is this? Who's so interested? Why is the, why this infatuation with the concept where they have to be right here, right in my in my home? I feel like congested. Where I can't go here, I can't go there, I can't start relationships. And it's not like God can't break through any of it. He can, right? He can, but He's leaving it up to us to make the decision. You know, to choose, right? To love your neighbor. You know, the passage in Scripture where she, Jesus says, "Love thy neighbor." You know, what is the greatest commandment? Thou shalt love the Lord uh, thy God with all of thy mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. I think it's in Deuteronomy uh, 6, uh, verses 4, 5, 6, something like that. Um, you know, this is neighborly. This is not neighborly to, um, to trespass into someone's home, to sabotage their property, to cut their flesh. As soon as the flesh is cut, the lease is up. The lease has been what? Violated. As soon as the flesh is cut, 
You know, you cut it once, that's a violation of the lease. You cut it twice, that's a violation of the lease. You cut it, you know, even though they're not big, three times, that's a violation of the lease. You go down below to the, to the, to the area where the genital is, and you pull down the pants and you cut there, that's a violation of the lease. You go below that to the leg, to the shin area, and you cut there again, that's a violation of, you go to the foot. So from the top of my head to the bottom of my foot, these people have completely violated my body. And when I bring it to the police department, the police department is just like, yeah, so, because they're the ones doing it. Are they doing it because of Tom Sullivan? Is that, is that, their, is that, their, is that their reasoning? That they're constantly doing this because of Sullivan? Are they doing this because this Haitian woman wants to constantly be in between my legs? She's 94 years old. You know, she likes the color of my skin. She's enticed by it. And, you know, she makes a deal with MacArthur and his people. And they they say, yeah, we'll allow you to have it. And right then and there, you know, when they say, we'll allow you to have it as long as you submit. And they're giving it to her in junior high, high school, college, no, elementary school, junior high, high school, college, seminary, and now for the last 20 years, 16, 17, I don't know, however many years this has been going on, from 27 to 44, right? And then they're constantly telling you, um, you're gonna die, you're gonna die, you're gonna die, you're gonna die while you're young. What did I do to this MacArthur that I need to die while I'm young? What did I do to this Haitian woman that I need to die while I'm young? I don't understand the mentality behind these hits, behind these insults. Behind, I mean, I don't understand where is Grace Community Church? Where is the government? Where are these people that are supposed to be trustworthy? Trustworthy. What if I was your son or daughter and the, the new president was doing this to your son or daughter or the president of his school? Right? Or the president of his of his school, whether the school is a, a, a Ivy League school or a public school, um, whether it's a private school, right? And this is what they're doing to your son because they don't want your son on their level because your son has some sort of a gift and ability, and they don't want um, they don't want your son on the level, right? They don't want your son marrying a uh, European woman. They don't want your son. Uh, pastoring a, a, a congregation and they decide to conspire and use the government in their positions, right? Gabriel is supported by the community, so everybody in the community looks like Gabriel. MacArthur is supported by the clan, so everybody in authority supports MacArthur and closes the door so that you don't enter into seminaries and you don't enter into fellowships, right? He's a leader, so, every, so his influence is going to be over what? Other leaders. She's a fag, so her influence is going to be on what? Everybody that's a fan, everybody that's gay in America, and you know how big the, that gay community is, everybody that's gay, young or old, black and white, everybody's going to support this old woman because, oh, he didn't submit, and he didn't give that to me, and I sent for him, and I helped his mother, and I sent her $35, and I this, and I that, and I've been helping their family ever since, and I sent them to Switzerland, and, and I this, and I never got anything for it, and I want that. How many years do you give someone your genital? for sending for you when you were seven years old? How many years do you give someone your genital for sending for you when you were nine? And of course the state removes you from under their care because of abuse. And then from the age of 13 to 44, this woman is eating you like a piece of meat. How many years is it gonna be used by the government or by this woman that I sent for you? I pulled you out of an impoverished third world country so now you owe me your entire life when you should be married and having your own family. But now you owe me your entire life. You owe me big, man. You owe me so big. So what does the African-American community owe the European? Because now they're presidents, right? What do you African-Americans owe to these Europeans? Because now you're presidents of the United States of America. You're no longer slaves. So how, how many years is the Europeans going to use Barack's position to say, well, we made you our presidents, right? We sent for you. We made you our president. We brought you out of Africa and, and we brought you to all of this. So how many years is the European going to use that? That they made you president. And because they made you president, now you owe me big. I allow you to lead my people as king. I allow you to you to leave my people as king and I gave you permission to come out. 
we gave you permission to get that. Right? And now you're allowed to marry us through the community. So what's happening here has an effect on the relationship between Europeans and African Americans in this country. It's not just a Kevin Duclerant issue, it's a national issue between two nations and two tribes who are working through the issue still of subjugation, equality, and freedom. You see what I'm saying? There is still that issue lingering in the back. And it's, it's manifesting itself in the form of the European man named John MacArthur and the Haitian woman named Gabriel Franklin. Now what's missing out of me is all the details as to how it got to this level. Because when we take it up to the level, it's what? The Europeans and the African Americans. What is this issue that they're dealing with, with mixed men? Or with just within themselves with each other? So there's something not being um, addressed here publicly and openly. Or if it is, I missed it. And this is my debut, this is my turn to deal with it. Right? I'm the one that's lacking information to to basically put it into this. Um, what can I say? Um, this month I haven't preached the gospel outside. Um, it's the 21st and I haven't gotten around to it yet. And um, not because the work has not been done. I have uh, here at the apartment. I'm, I'm having this, or tried to have uh, meetings, uh, trying to bring the Christians out even though they can go next door to St. Saint Stephen's, I think, and the Grace Bible Church right here. Um, my building is right behind the two. Um, although I could have joined these two congregations, yet the situation with John would have escalated under those pastors. So instead of joining the, past, the, the, the two groups, I decided I'll, I'll keep going in this direction until it comes to an end, until it stops, right? Um, because as of right now, I'm not going to get a group out of this building or from these people. I'm not going to get a, a Christian group. Now the gays will show up and, you know, they'll ridicule and they'll mock and they'll act like they're dummies or, or they'll, they're, and because they're under John's instructions. When they come, they come because John sends them. And they come to ridicule and to mock and to insult. I mean, they'll do it in passing, you know. Um, so it's not like they, they really want to have a relationship. If they really want a relationship with God, they don't need me to initiate it, right? They don't need me to, to say, yeah, well, you know, you can come and, and, and I'll lead you to Jesus. No, these people are Americans. They know where the church is. They know where the Bible is. They know exactly what the Bible teaches. They've got uh, television to tell them everything, right? And I don't, don't get me on the soapbox of television, right? Of just what the television is and what it can do. Um, but the bottom line is that the ministry I'm still trying to do. What else am I going to do with my time? I no longer work for Labor Ready, right? And um, I can't go in there and get a job without getting hit or without going to a job where there may be a hit waiting for me, right? That's what the manager was doing, preparing me for all the hits. Um, so I've been told. But in any case, you know, things like this happen and, you, you, you know, they become a distraction to, you know, you wake up and you're distracted because of the pain that's in your leg. You're distracted at, at the pain that's in your hands or your, your forearm or, you know, you're looking at your head and it's all chopped up and you're going, you know, it discourages the heart because you're, you're wondering, how do I put an end to this abuse when I'm not doing anything offensive to the American people to bring it upon myself? You know, it's like the African guy who they hiss at every time he walks by the store because everybody that hangs at, hangs at that store is clean. And they don't like a nigger walking by, right? We don't like that nigger. He didn't do nothing, he didn't say nothing, but we don't like that nigger. We don't like that nigger walking by here and he smells and he's dark and we don't want him in a big lick, big foot and blah, blah, blah. And they're starting something. And, and the person didn't even do nothing. This is what's happening here. They're coming in and they're deliberately, you know, aggravating for what? Because they want to fight with Haiti. And I'm thinking, do you want me? And then they want me to bring this down to the Haitian uh, uh, island. And I'm thinking, well, do you want me to take, do you want me to leave America, go down to Haiti like Jean-Marie did and got killed? That's what I was told. And when I go down there, you're going to hit me through the Haitian people the same way you've hit me through Gabriel. And what are you going to do to my mother who's down there? 
my brothers, my half brothers and sisters that are not mixed, that, that are down there, the sons and daughters of Sybil Nord, who I was told is dead. So you want me to bring this situation to Port-au-Prince so that you can do what? I mean, I don't understand the, the motive here behind the, the government's motive. I don't understand the government's motive, the gay community's motive, John MacArthur's motive, or Gabriel Franklin's motive. I don't understand what is the motive, what exactly are you after that you feel that is my responsibility to give to you? Right? What is this? I'm talking to the American people now, more than just the church, because this is beyond the church. This is this is beyond the church thing. So I'm thinking, what 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 gives? What is this? What is this thing here that you people have done? I mean, what is this constantly? I mean, if what if, if I'm the, the the international, what are you doing to the Native American Indian? What are you doing to the Native American Indian to constantly remind him or her that you're the lead? You took the land. Now this is your home, and they're not allowed to have any part of a square inch of that country out there. If this is what you European English British people are doing to me through Franklin and MacArthur, what are you doing to the Native American Indian to remind them who, you know, it's like, just remember, I'm the, it's us, it's us now. What are you doing to the African to remind them, right? I mean, if there's a, there's two sides to every coin. If there's a white side, there's always a dark side. If Barack is, is the light and Michelle is the darkness, right? What are you doing to Michelle and her tribe? Because she's not mixed. Right? So what are you doing to her and her side? Right? If he's the white guy, half white, half, and he has to listen to both sides of the story, this is, this is, the, this is, this is where I'm right? Half light, half dark. Whereas Michelle is all done. And I'm not trying to cut them down, but I'm seeing, I'm using them as an example so that you understand where it's at. And I'm saying I don't understand this. All right? Where is it where are you coming from? Who's who's the mastermind behind this? And if the government knows that this is not right, if these laws are being of uh, if, if my rights are being violated, I can't get a lawyer. I can't bring this to court because I've already brought it to court. Seattle, San Diego. When I tried it, they, they drove me out of the city. And here in Portland, I've done it like four times. And every time, the judges sided with MacArthur. There is nothing too great that cannot be resolved, right? This man is not over me or over you. This situation can be resolved, but are you willing to Resolve it as an American people. Are you willing to put an end to it before somebody else who is innocent gets killed? Right? So all the confusion and all the question, right, before this makes this before this this gets on the, the you know the television so snapped, you know, people go in and, and they snap after a while and they start killing. And um, sometimes you hear me in here in the evenings and I'm cursing out Gabriel Franklin because I'm so pissed off at the fact that this woman, who's in his, her 90s, is not in an old folks' home, or she's not dead already. Yesterday, I walked into the building after they, 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 they completely messed up my time at the university, and I, my conclusion was MacArthur needs to get bit. You know, both him and this Haitian woman, Jonathan, his daughter Melinda, and the staffs that are with him, they need to be bitten. Somebody needs to go to wherever they're at and just, why? Because that's not the position of an American leader, what he's doing here, what he and this woman, you know, sitting in the background, hissing on the intercom, assaulting my body, trespassing and violating my leases, not just this one, all of them since, what, 1999. He's been doing this since, as long as I, from 81 until now. This is when it started, and, and, and probably, and before 81, before 81 where he went after my mother. So, America, it's on your plate. It's on your plate. This situation here is on your plate. And what you choose to do with it will determine um, the direction that my life goes into and the direction that some of your lives go into. Because some of you on Grace Green Church property, I guarantee you, this situation is affecting you. And you're blaming me when I'm not the one who is doing this to you, it's your own pastor teacher. It's your own husband, Patricia, that is doing this to you. 
not me. And Matthew, Mark, um, Melinda, and Marcy, this is the doing of your own dad, not me. I'm not the one who sabotaged your families. I'm not the one who sabotaged your life. I'm not the one who did that to you. It's your own father's pride. It's your own father's arrogance. It's your own father who is doing this because of his own egotism. And he's, I know I know he's a big six foot something man and he's European American. And it is your dad that's doing this, not, not me, your husband. I had I, I did nothing. So whatever has happened to you on Grace Marine Church property, it is John who has done it to you, not me. It's not my infatuation with Melinda. It's not my desire to take over his church or his ministry. Um, it's not my um, wanting to, to be the president of the Master Seminary and any of that. Whatever Kirk's mother-in-law heard, I, I had nothing to do with it. So if you're on Grace Marine Church property and you're miserable and you were one of my roommates, and, and I'm talking about Kevin Schoenhoven, um, R.C. Wright, um, what's his name? Um, Alan Paul, Jonathan Zabo, um, even Mark Rodriguez, who never was a roommate of mine, but Eddie Gonzalez was. If anything has happened to you from the time that you met me in 91 to the time that MacArthur and his staff asked me to leave in 99, whether you have passed away or you have been hit because you were in association with me at Cal State University Northridge, because I know he went after CSUN. John, John, uh, John Fonville was hit, probably, and probably Kratz was hit. The whole CSUN, uh, Sylvia Martinez, I heard was hit. I mean, a lot of people were hit, and it was because of this situation. Because at, back then, I didn't know the difference between the community and the clan and the church that was on the property. So the hit didn't come from me. It might have come as a result of John's dealing with me and this Haitian woman's dealing with me. But if some of you are in bad situations as a result of this situation right here, it wasn't me, it was John. It was, it was his own doing. Um, I, I don't know how many people were affected by it, and I don't know how many people are still being affected by it right now. I have nothing to do with it. Because this is where he has me, and I can't do anything about this. Uh, the police department which is right down the street, and they won't take my side. So this is outside of CSUN Bible study, outside of Grace Community Church, outside of the college department. This is what it became. I don't know how this affected Art of Amos, right? How, how did it affect Art of Amos? Wasn't he a Bob Jones um, something, right? Didn't he have something to do with that? I don't know. I don't know how this affected Rick or, or, uh, um, or Holland or those people. Right? So I, I you know, I, I don't apologize because it's not my lead that's doing this. It's his. And if Grace can't get and if Grace can't get a hold of um of the situation, it's gonna cost a lot more people their lives. Because when he's done here, he's not gonna retire. He's just gonna move on to the next person. And the next person may be a European or a Hispanic or an Asian. From what I heard, at least Dare got hit. You know, and for what? Because I went up to San Francisco and 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 did what, and 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 spoke to her, and I think we went somewhere or, or something. I, I mean, people have gotten hit when they weren't even involved in 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 my family life. People got hit, and because of John, John's fury. I sometimes I feel like John is Hitler himself. You know, the spirit of Hitler has, has come back to to haunt us, who are the church and those who are Israelites that have come through grace. So if you've been hit as a result of this, it's not my doing. It's John. John who, who hides in the background. John who has masterminded the whole thing from beginning to end. John who is unstoppable and can't be touched by anyone. Um, John and, his, and, and Gabriel, right? She doesn't have the authority, but who she is representing may have that authority. And from what I was told, it was the queen. Now only you know if that is true, right? And whether or not uh, she has anything to do. And I'm not blaming it, but I'm hearsay. You know, this is what I heard. Now, whether it's true or not, but this is just my defense. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that they didn't break my arm, you know, and shoot me in the head or uh, poison me to death. But this is an ongoing thing, and uh, this is my defense and update. You know. Anyway, let me pray because um, I, I think the Lord still calls uh, Christians to repent. Right. Um, you probably won't see me be, uh, in, in the church pastoring because of how much this man has done to diminish my testimony. You probably won't see me uh, 
like in an elder board. What I'm doing by myself here, if you go online and you see what um, the, the site, don't get deceived into thinking that Duclaron became some big shot pastor teacher. I didn't. You know, I'm just, I mean, I went from grace to homelessness and from homelessness to different um, apartment complex for, for, for the least period of time. You know, three months here, six months here, month to month, and sometimes I'm in the streets. And it's not my doing, it's John's doing. It's him and this woman that are doing this. They're, she's 50 years my senior, he's 40 years my senior. So this is an ongoing thing, and I, I don't know how to put an end to it. It's, um, you know, and, and, and I think the message, you know, to, to end this well, right? I think the message of God, uh, no matter what the situation is, is always, right? What's the message? That's the message right there. All right, that's the message. Right there. No matter what. Right? God is declaring that all men, Acts 17, should repent of all your sins. Right? Of all of it. So these people, if you know where they're at in these buildings, you know, if you know where they're at in Portland, you know, you shouldn't be afraid of John to call him to repent. If you're a pastor yourself, why aren't the pastors stepping in? Why aren't the leaders of the church calling MacArthur to repentance openly and publicly on national television? Why are the state leaders not calling him to repent? Right? Why are the state leaders not calling him to repent? Are the state leaders responsible for this? Are they the ones who who are supporting him? And if so, why is it that they're violating my constitutional right or my civil rights? It doesn't make sense to me. Right? Somebody needs to call these people to repentance because when I do it, it's 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 irrelevant. It it, it means nothing. Right? It doesn't mean anything. Maybe uh, some of you who have uh, more authority and more power could could go in that direction. Right, and say, hey, you need to stop this. This is this is this abuse is not needed. You know, this man doesn't need this. He doesn't need the constant badgering every single day. You in his face through the community, right? You need to you know, put an end to this and uh, get on with your uh, uh, presidency. <laughs> you know, you need to go go back to Southern California and and go do your president thing. Um, you know, with the rest of the Master Seminary. Yeah, you know, I'm wondering how would the Master Seminary respond. If they knew this is what the man was doing, how many African Americans have gone through this, you know, with John? And, and, and of course, did they have to submit themselves as slaves to, you know, Spanish women, Asian women, or European women in order to get out of this situation? What did they have to surrender to, submit to, yield to, in order for them to be free of this? This constant harassment, this constant being held back. Right? What did these men, these other African Americans, like uh, um, Carl Hargrove, or or or, or um, I, I can see their faces, but I can't remember their name. Bobby Scott, right? Or or um, you know, I think his name was not Earl, but there there's some other men, and and I'm thinking who who, who loved the Lord and who loved to serve. You know what what? How did they get out of this? Or some of them, if they ever got out. You know, I understand that MacArthur's connected to some big names and to some big people, but we can't put people over our God's message. We can't lead, we can't allow men, whatever race or tribe they're from, we cannot allow them to put themselves over the law of our government and over, or else, if that's the case, then anybody can step in from anywhere and take control over our lives, right? We can't allow men to... I mean, once we set a, a set of laws, we must live by those laws because the laws protect you and they protect me, right? The laws of the land, the laws of our religion, what we believe, the laws of our housing authorities. Um, we cannot let anybody seep through. We allow them. Grace has bylaws. He violated every bylaw when I was there. And when I brought it up to Bill Zimmer, Bill Zimmer told me, no, we don't know. There's nothing wrong. When it was the complete opposite, when this was going on in the 90s, before I was given that four-page letter, Bill Zimmer shrugged it off. Like, I don't know anything. I, I remember one day I went down to, um, to uh, after um, John had spoken one Sunday evening, I, I had asked Jonathan as to, to escort me to talk to Bill. I wanted him to be a, um, a witness to whatever I said because things were happening to my vehicle, things were happening to my life, and I didn't understand why the maltreatment or why, why the constant... Um, badgering, right? That was going on at the seminary, and that was going on at the uh, at the church. 
And Bill's response was like, well, we don't know. We don't know what's going on. I think it's the opposite. I think the elder board is well acquainted with John's wicked ways. And either they cannot, they don't know how to remove him out of that position that he's in. And I think some of them might have been affected and hit by him. And so I'm not calling a conspiracy against the patent demand. I'm not calling um, for evil to be done against him. But for a man to present himself as a minister of the gospel, a pastor of the church, the president of a school of theology where men are being trained to lead the sheep of God for the kingdom of God, you cannot overlook the fact that wrong has is being done by this person. I don't know, maybe he's in a situation that's unresolved with Bob. Maybe that whole thing is unresolved with Bob through the community. And that's the reason why he's either being forced to come out that way or he himself is making that decision because it's affected him. So I'm not sure I'm putting it out there again, right? And I put it out there over a hundred times and I'm not getting any results. It's sort of like fishing and trying to resolve this. Now, instead of demanding for me to submit, I don't know what you're asking me to submit to. Same sex with another guy, marrying another guy, uh, yielding to European men as a homosexual so that I can marry an African woman instead of a woman of my choice. Um, what exactly is it that Grace is asking here? What exactly is the seminary is asking for? And if they say, well, we're not asking for anything, then why is your president in the background of my life? And all of the doors are closed if you're not asking for anything. If you're asking me to change my taste in women, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because it's innate. It's something that God gave me. And it's not, I'm not, the, you you yourself know that MacArthur wrote a book, and I'm gonna, just going to use the title, which is Differed by Design. And if I've been made different by design, i got to stick with the design and what the designer has. You can't, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't force him to drink, right? You can bring a Negro woman or a, a Haitian woman or a woman from Africa to me, but if I have no, if God has not given me no desire for the woman, why dishonor the woman and and, and, and put her in a position where she's going to be looked down upon? But you've taken it to a level now where it's like, oh, she doesn't have to love you. You can lust after us European men while she while she'll give you the sex. You know, she'll take the sex from you. So now you men are determined to force. African men in a in, 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 in a direction even if it violates the sexual laws of this country even if it if, if rape is the issue you are determined as an American people as a European people both church and state to drive us off of church property so we could be dealt with on the issue of not longing for your women they're not your women if they're sisters in the faith they're not your women just because they're they're white all the African women they're not mine they decide who they fall in love with and, and who they marry and who they date. I don't have any control over those women. Right? Spanish women the same, or mixed women, like myself. Some are mixed with white, others are mixed with Spanish. I'm mixed with Spanish, just a little bit, about a quarter of it. Um, but, you know, we can't control that, right? And and this is, this is part of the problem here, is the control issue. Right, the control issue that I'm a European and I get to control and tell you what to do. You don't stand as my equal. Therefore, you know, this that has to stop. I thought that stopped with the thirteenth amendment, right? Of the Constitution. That whole manipulation and control thing. And maybe that's the reason why he's hiding in the background, so that there's no evidence to show that it's his manipulation and control that is doing this to my life. Right? And how many people have had to fall prey to what he's doing? And, and, and you know, yesterday I called MacArthur a snake, you know, who who who, um, who hides behind a rock. He's the snake of Grace Community Church who hides behind a rock, and only when the prey comes out, then he slids out of the back to bite, right? And he's been out. And, and, and I asked him, you know, and talking to him in the back here, and I said to him, who is the rock of Grace Community Church? Christ is the rock. If grace is a church, right, but who is the rock? At the time, I was making reference to who was the Christian that um, that basically makes a grace community church, right? And him, if he's community, then he's the serpent that's in the back, and, and very seldom does he come out, but when he comes out, it's usually someone who is a prey, someone who is not um, aware of his position on the property, aware of his children's position on the property, right? Or aware of his... Uh, immorality or, or whatever it is and when they overstep their boundaries like I've done or like I did unknowingly then he comes out and he has to deal with it 
He has to deal with the individual until the individual takes the hit because of his famous name, right? The individual has to take the hit until his name is cleared up. So that means all of this stuff that he's doing is to clear up his name. But what is it that I got his name involved in? From what I can remember, nothing. So this is an ongoing thing for 30 something years. And it's like, how do you put an end to this? Oh God, how do you put an end to this? You're knocking your head. You know, it's one of those, how do you put an end to this? It's not this. It's like, how do you fat? I mean, right? It's like, Arr! anyway, I don't want to take two hours of your time. I'm going to pray us out. And, uh, and plus, I still got to get messages out there, right? This year, it's already the 21st, and I haven't said a word yet to the people except for that one time when I went to the police department. So if you know the situation in your Grace Community Church or Master Seminary, you need to, you know, text John, write John, call John, leave him an email. Um, same thing with Gabriel. You know, if D. Franklin, you and your sisters, you need to come and get your mom out of here, out of the situation if you can. Um, she says to me that um, if she leaves, I die. Well, I'm going to die anyway, whether she's here or not. Right? It is appointed for man to die once, and after this comes judgment. So if it's my time, it's my time. There's nothing I can do about it. You know? uh, if clinical death is the real issue, then bye-bye America. Right? Uh, because you know it's insulting and it's painful what they're doing. And even though it's not like a, a whip on my back, and sometimes I feel like it is, because I wake up with a welt back there, or pain back there. Right? And so, those of you who know how to help, you should say something to Congress. You should say something to the government. You should say something to those who are on the panel running for the presidency because they're aware of this. They've made it obvious that they're aware. So I don't know where it's going to be with the new president right next year. Um, I don't know. I think I've said more than my piece to defend my own position in the House and how this wealth got to my leg and how this thing is being dealt with. It's not being dealt with by management because it's beyond them. Uh, it's not being dealt with by the police department. Um, it's not being dealt with by the um, Office of Agency Liaison, because I don't have any proof. It's not being dealt with by um, um, Organizing for Action. I've sent several emails to Organizing for Action, asking the, the, the administration of, of Barack Obama for assistance and saying, how do I put an end to this trespass? And every single email has come back as a dud. There's not a time where they have ever stepped up and says, we're going to walk you through the process of getting out of this situation. That's basically why I sent those emails, is can you please walk me through the process of getting out of this situation with this American Klansman and this Haitian woman who has submitted to him? Can you please walk me through the process of getting out of this situation? I cannot get myself out of this situation. I don't know who the man is and what authority he has over you outside of grace as a Klansman, as a gay man, or whatever he is. You know, would you mind helping me walk through this? I'm not an American. I'm a Haitian Cuban who's been naturalized. And so when they brought this to me, I was like, what do you want me to do with it? You know, these are your problems in your own country. If I was one of your paid leaders, I would have dealt with it already. But this is something I'm not, right? I've been rejected. And so, you know, my point here this morning now is to say, okay, well, you know, would you, the government, walk me through the process of putting an end to this nonsense that this man is doing? You have the equipment. Could you please bring him, bring it out into the open, right? What he is doing, right? This, the, the trespassing, the photos, the videos. You have the equipment. I don't. You have the money, right? I don't. Somebody needs to expose this. Uh, for as far back as it goes, so it can come to an end, and we can all go back into our own lives, right? Unless this comes to an end, we're all stuck here. You on Grace Community Church are stuck. Some of you can't go anywhere. You at the Master Seminary can't go nowhere. Some of you are stuck in this state. Some of you are stuck in this situation. Some of you are stuck in marriages. Marriages as a result of this situation. And you, you can't get out. So, Unless you as a government are willing to, you know, come alongside and assist me, we're all stuck here, right? We're all stuck here. Perhaps if, and I'm going to say something, and, 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 and I'm going to bite my tongue when I say this, perhaps if this situation did not exist, Barack Obama would not be the president. Anyway, let's pray. Father, I, I just want to pray in the name of Jesus that you would... Um, 
protect all of us who have been affected by this situation, protect all of us as a result of um, what has occurred here. We're all sinners, Lord, and we are um, at your mercy. We can't do anything to help ourselves. Um, you yourself have said in the scriptures that um, a man, we can't do nothing without you. Right? I think it's in First John um, 5 or something where it says that apart from me you can do nothing. But yet with the same breath in Paul's writing he says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So Father I pray for the government and for the church and for the seminaries that have been affected by this situation. Uh, men who are now willing to stand with John and who are standing against what he's doing. Give them strength and courage to take the proper procedural steps to put an end to this thing here because I don't know what it is and nobody has come to me and spoken to me outside of the four page letter that Kevin Banks has given me um, years ago no one has ever stepped up to me once to explain to me why this is being done what it is that's being done what they expect from me and so if men are being hurt hit killed abused um, and you know I don't know if it's the rape that's doing it or if it's Russia that's doing it if it's the clan that's doing it, if it's England that's doing it, or if it's the gay community that's doing it, if it's the queen, I don't know who's behind this. You know, all I could say is maybe Satan has mustered up uh, an army of rebellious people, and they're hitting and they're hitting hard. Uh, because I've taken this to the United Nations, and even then, it was not resolved. So my prayer this morning, Lord, is that you would step in or you would direct the proper people who have the authority to bring this entire thing. To an end. I mean, I, 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 it's just a scratch in my leg, but trespassing is still a violation. It's, it's still a violation to a lease. Uh, and, and Lord, I want this to come to an end. I want this to stop. I want it to stop on this level before it goes to another level. And maybe it's already on the other level and, and it's affecting me now. So maybe it needs to be reversed. Whatever it is that's going on up there on, on the government's level and on the, pe on, the, on, the, on the leadership level of this nation, of the churches, maybe that's what needs to, it needs to, whatever it is, it needs to come to an end so that guys on this level are not affected by it um, every single day. So if, if the trespassing is happening here in my own life and I'm not embracing it, it is obviously happening somewhere else with another people, with another tribe. Uh, it may be a family, it, it may be a church, uh, you know, those people are not over there in, in the East who lost their, their churches and their lives, you know, Africans. Uh, perhaps it was because somebody trespassed and crossed over when they shouldn't. Somebody gave and put the gun in that boy's hand, somebody put the fire you know, or, or, or the explosion in, in these church buildings. Maybe, maybe the, the problem is even on a greater scale. And you, Lord, need to direct the right people um, to put it into us. And so, Lord, I pray this in your name.